Hey y'all and welcome. Today we're going to be talking about an important topic in the world of art and it's a topic that often frustrates and confuses a lot of new artists. Now, if you've ever taken an art class, cracked open a drawing book, picked the brains of your favorite artists, or watched any number of YouTube videos on the topic of drawing, you've probably heard people talk about this. And that's the concept of drawing what you see, not what you think you see. But what does that actually mean? Well, today we're gonna to get into exactly that. We're gonna be talking about why this concept is so important, how our brains actively work against us when it comes to the skill of observation. And lastly, we're gonna go over some exercises that you can do to help you improve in this skill. So let's get right into it. To begin with, what does it mean to draw what you think you're seeing and what does it look like in practice? Well, first, it's important to know how the brain works when it comes to seeing and learning. One of the ways that we can begin to explain this phenomenon of drawing what you think you see is with something called the Hebbian process or the Hebbian theory. And basically what this theory says is that neurons that fire together get wired together. Basically what that means is that if neuron A fires and is constantly followed by neuron B after, our brains start to wire them together such that later on, if neuron A fires, our brain automatically starts firing neuron B, even if neuron B isn't actually supposed to fire. Okay, that's a gross simplification of it all, but basically what it means is that our brains are biologically and evolutionarily wired to look for patterns, to form habits, and that our brain will automatically go on autopilot and fill in the blanks when certain stimuli are presented. Now, this process is really helpful and important to us as humans in general, but it's also responsible for some of our not so good habits and can cause problems when our brain starts to fill in the blanks for things that we don't want it to. But Miriam, what does this have to do with drawing? Well, let's take a look. Even when asked to draw as realistically as possible, our brains will try and do us a solid and fill in the blanks for us. Your brain says, you want an eye? Heck, I know how to draw an eye. I've drawn hundreds of eyes before. You sit back and relax and let me, the almighty brain, take over. And now instead of drawing what you actually see, your brain draws symbols of what you see instead. Why? Because for years and years and years, since the days you were in grade school, you've drawn symbols and your parents and your teachers have high-fived you or given you a kiss on the head and told you you did a great job. Your brain hardwired neuron A with neuron B and said, you want an eye? I'll give you an eye. And it's worked perfectly up until this day. So why should it change? Paintingcourse.com has a really interesting page all about this, where they gave students a picture and then later asked them to recreate it. And what was produced were symbolic representations of the human face and not actually what they saw. Now, this doesn't just apply to beginners. This is something that I struggled with for a long time and something I still have to stop myself from doing. Here's a painting I did back in 2020. And on the surface, it's fine, but look at those eyes. Those are symbols of eyes. They might have resemblance to the real thing, but you can clearly see my brain had taken over and said, Miriam, you sit back. I know what an eye looks like. Now, drawing like that isn't bad, and I don't think my old work is bad either, but I will tell you this. That was not a stylistic choice on my part. That was me earnestly trying to paint as realistically and as lifelike as possible. I focused so much on getting my proportions and dimensions correct, and I thought I was painting what I saw, but really I was letting my brain take over and letting my brain tell me what an eye looked like versus actually what I saw in the picture. So how do we break this? How do we actually paint what we're seeing? Well, Acknowledging the problem is step number one. Just knowing that this is a process going on and that it's something to look out for is something that will automatically improve your work. Step two, tricking the brain. Neuron A fires neuron B. The fastest way to change neuron B, to change your output, is to change neuron A, to change how you process it, to physically and literally change your input. 
From that same article at paintingcourse.com, they later took those same students and had them draw the same picture again. The difference this time, they turned their reference photo and their paper sideways. And look at the difference. They changed the way they process their input. It helps break the connections in our brain. Now, I used to do this all the time. I turned my reference photo and my painting upside down, and suddenly I'd see glaring mistakes that I couldn't see before. Now, overcoming this issue of drawing what we think we see instead of what we actually see doesn't just apply to when we're drawing things symbolically. Our brain routinely tries to trick us when it comes to things such as value, color, and shape. Side note, this is why brain teasers and optical illusions like this are so much fun. Our almighty brain takes over and says, ah, a checkerboard. I've seen these before. I know how they work. Square B is the light square and thus must be higher in value than square A, when in fact, they're the same. Now, your brain does the same thing when it comes to color. Take a look at this selfie. Now, my eyes are green, or at least that's what I've been told my whole life. I might be tempted to pull out the green paint, but when I actually inspect this color, it's quite gray. And in this photo, they're even skewing red. Wisdom may tell us that the shadows in this picture under my neck and hand are dark and thus lower in chroma, when in fact, those shadows are packed with color. So again, how do we stop this? How do we train our eyes to really see? Well, it takes practice. It takes lots of time and practice out of our busy days to really work on the skill of observation. I think just knowing that it is a skill that requires time and practice is half the battle. If you're struggling, break up your input. Change the way you're processing your reference image and your work. Don't be afraid to use technology to help aid you as well. I use technology to help aid my decisions in color and value all the time. And last, go easy on yourself. It's really hard breaking up all of those connections. Our brain has spent years and years forming. So um, don't be too hard on yourselves. And if you guys have any questions, let me know. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. Bye.